Dear Canada, we are mere weeks away from an election, and roughly 40% of us are thinking about voting Conservative. Yes, it's the third election in five years and you're tired. Yes, the rhetoric from different sides of the table sound pretty similar to last time and the time before that. But this time, things are different. They're different because the government in power has had ample time to actually show what it's made of. And they're different because, for some reason, we're still mere weeks away from possibly handing Stephen Harper a majority. And I don't understand. Here in Canada, we pride ourselves on being nice, polite, smart, and progressive. And yet, roughly 40% of us are willing to elect a man who is not nice, whose government has been remarkably impolite, who plays us for fools, and who moves our country backwards. When we voted him into power, it was partially because we felt that the former government, led by the Liberals, had become corrupt. We had the sponsorship scandal to prove it, and here came Harper promising responsible government and accountability. Well, fast forward five years. The Harper government has been in power for longer than a standard term of office, and he wanted his government to be accountable. Well, let's do exactly that. Let's hold him accountable for his actions. He's had plenty of time to show us what his government stands for. So the following list is not exhaustive, although it is exhausting. Contempt of Parliament. Exceeding the legal election spending limit. Rebranding Government of Canada to Harper Government. Refusing access to information on Afghanistan. Killing the Federal Access to Information database. Telling Canadians they were against an appoint Senate, and then appointing more than 30 new senators. Proroguing Parliament twice when things weren't going his way. Breaking his own promises on election reform. Allowing unregistered lobbyists to pitch contracts for their own personal gain. Killing the long-form census, an important source of information for any number of services. Not allowing environmental scientists to talk to the media without the government's permission. Giving disproportionate amounts of money for the writings that voted Conservative. Promising no deficit and then handing us the biggest one in Canadian history. Cutting funding to the arts in Canada and trying to censor our film industry. Actually doctoring documents. Leaving classified documents everywhere, including at a news bureau and the House of a Minister's ex-girlfriend. Calling cancer sexy and joking about the casualties of the listeriosis outbreak. Plagiarizing speeches from other world leaders. Allowing human rights violations in the form of covering up Afghanistan detainee torture and ignoring Omar Khadr. Outright lying about expenses, including the G8 or G20. Building a $1.9 million fake lake. Tax cuts for corporations, even after raiding the nest eggs of many Canadians through the income trust fiasco. Stifling the media on countless fronts, from escorting them out of conferences before the opposition gets a chance to speak, to restricting them to five questions a day during the election campaign. Playing hooky at an important global conference, the Bali Climate Conference. It took one scandal for Canadians to vote the Martin government out of office, and yet, for some reason, roughly 40% of us still want to re-elect a government that has actively lied to us and deceived us over five years. If you're planning on voting Conservative, I urge you to take a moment and really look at their track record, and ask yourself if this kind of behavior and this kind of deception and corruption is something that you can morally support. And if you're planning on not voting, I urge you to really look at the government we've got and ask yourself if you're willing to stand idly by and do nothing while your government does this to you.